Yo, what's good? What's good? What's going on, people? What's going on? Back, man. How everybody doing? Hope everybody enjoyed the last video, man. Like I told you, I'm gonna keep it rolling, keep it going. We can keep pushing this content and keep doing what we doing, man. But we just gonna need them like, share, and subscribes, man. We gonna need that bad, man. Like starting from the bottom, like it's gonna take time to build up my con build up my channel to you know getting viewers from outside of people that's even from Virginia. They even know about the Virginia system, about what I'm talking about. Like all of y'all are welcome into the channel to actually, you know what I mean, to see what I'm talking about. To see about the good content that I'm giving. But with that being said though, man, like let's get it going. Let's keep people, you know what I mean, knowing what's going on by sending them um <clears throat> the video and sharing it with others. If we can the, the message can get around or how we staying out the way, y'all, because that's what we doing over here in this channel. We staying our ass out the way. That's what we doing, man. That's the main goal. If if we ain't talking about staying out the way, then we ain't talking about nothing, man. <clears throat> and speaking of staying out the way, like what's good with y'all? Like everybody been staying out the way? I've been staying my ass out of the way. Y'all already know I've been staying my ass out of the way. Y'all know the count. Like, <laughs> it's over for me. So, my ass is out the way. And I encourage y'all to do the same thing, man. Like, switch it up a little bit, man. Go the regular route for a second, man. Like, sacrifice, man. Like, go without. Try it. Try, try to be the person that you think you, you can't be. Like, see how that go, man, for you. Like, being a regular person, it scares a lot of dudes who, who live the life of I have everything I want, you know what I mean? Or I can go do this to go get whatever I want. But the consequences don't match the risk no more, man. So, like, just think about that shit, man. Like, when you're out there doing crazy shit, like, the consequences don't match the risk. It don't match the risk. You know what I mean? The risk is too is too risky. Like, you know what I mean? For the type of money you get, don't even match for the type of time. Them people going to get your ass. You know what I mean? So, just think about that shit when y'all out there, man. You know what I mean? Because... Going inside in that jump, <clears throat> you're definitely not going to enjoy it. <clears throat> so trust me, like, stay your ass out of the way, period. That's what I'm telling y'all. Stay out of the way because it's too crafty out here. It's too crazy. And at the end of the day, you can't beat these people. You're on their time. Right now, everything everybody doing is on their time, man. When they ready for your ass, they're going to come get your ass. Like, And that's just what it is. Like, you know, knock on wood, you know what I mean? But. Stay your ass out the way, man. You ain't got to worry about that shit, man. So that's what we doing, man. We staying our ass out the way. So look, man. Let me get to this story, man. This story was crazy because, like, around this time, it's like, now it's like 2003, 2004. You know what I mean? So now, like, <clears throat> I've been on Sussex for a hot second. You know what I mean? I'm kind of getting used to of being on the compound, adapting to just normal prison life. You know what I mean? I'm just running around there just trying to just be a normal dude. I ain't going to lie. Like, I wasn't in a nothing. Not a nothing. It wasn't nothing I was in. I was just chilling, observing, and staying out of the way and minding my business. That's all I was doing. Like, you got to understand, like, being a young dude with 18 years at that time, like, that junk stung. Like, it hurt, man. Like, damn, like, you know. And... I had to deal with that. I had to deal with having 18 years. So, like, around those, around these times I'm talking about, it's kind of like I'm just just, just basically just bitten, just floating around, just just staying out the way as I normally do, and that what was going on. But a change kind of happened on Sussex around the same time I'm talking about around these same years. What they started doing was this. Now, they already had people from other compounds that was coming up there, uh, but it was a lot of from that a lot of people from the higher up uh, um, levels, like level fives, level fours, different level fours that want to get closer to Tidewater, you know what I mean, or get closer to Richmond, because actually Sussex wasn't far from Richmond. It was like right in the middle. It was close to Tidewater and close to Richmond. Closer to Richmond than closer to Tidewater, but like a lot of dudes were trying to get closer to what, you know what I mean, where their peoples was at. So like uh, the compound was actually changing around as far as how people was actually getting transferred on Sussex as they got rid of all those D.C. inmates. Now, around this time, all the D.C. inmates are gone. Now, it's kind of like a regular prison, you know what I mean, how they running it and how everything's going. Um, right before, I'm about to tell y'all what happened, um, they actually passed out a rec sheet now. Now, they, everything is normal. We was able to order electronics. I finally got a TV, you know what I mean? I finally got a TV. I wasn't, like, for real, for real, you could order a Walkman back then, 
But I won't enter the tape that shit. Like, I don't even in there. Like, I just, my mind wasn't, I just, my man had one. And I just could borrow his. And I used to just rock out with his job. But I, def, I definitely had a TV. But they actually passed out a rec sheet. And a rec sheet is your schedule of what y'all going to be going out, the days and, and the times of all that y'all going outside. So around this time, like I told y'all, like, Sussa's actually turned into a sweet compound around these years right here. So around these years right here, they had a rec sheet, which, um, it started um kind of like in the summertime when they did this, and we was actually going outside three times a day, morning, uh, evening, and nighttime. You know what I mean? They had morning wreck, evening wreck, and night wreck. So the wreck sheet had the whole compound on the wreck sheet, but it was so sweet that they, they just scrambled it up. You'll go look at the wreck sheet for Monday, go look for your pod, and they'll probably be like, your pod on yard one with 3B... I mean, 3D, 1A, like they're just scrambling. So everybody was mingling. Like you was just out there. You might be on the ball field. The ball field was a big ball field, like in the middle of all the yards. And the ball field had uh, probably, I'll say at least probably four or five pods they was letting on there from different buildings. So you, whatever your pod was at, was scheduled to be at on that rec sheet, that's what y'all was supposed to be at. So the rec was sweet. The rec was sweet, man. Outside, they had uh, a basketball court. Where they had three basketball courts. At first, when we first got there, it was a full court, but they ended up changing it through the time that they actually had us locked down. They made all them shits half court. So it was all, it was three half courts on each side of the yard. On my side of the yard, in two building where I was at, we have yard one. So yard one, as soon as you come out the building, boom, right there, it's a, it's a, it's a little baby field. Um, you can actually walk laps around the joint. They got pull-up bars, dip bars, push-up bars. Um, that's the only bars they got out there. So you're either doing push-ups, dips, or goddamn um, pull-ups. <laughs> One of the three. You know what I mean? So that was on that yard. And they had a baby track. So niggas would be out there just walking the track or either on the fence talking to dudes, which was on the basketball courts I was telling y'all about, the three basketball courts. They had a court right here. <clears throat> a court beside it and a court behind it. So the two courts that was in the front, the yard that we actually on, that yard one joint, you can actually talk to the dudes on that on that basketball court right there. And beside the basketball court was the big yard, the big ball field I was telling y'all about where they put like few pods was up there going out together and it was just huge. It was a big track and dudes can jog, you can walk. Like it just dudes used to be out there kicking it. You They can talk to the us over on the other yard or to the basketball court, whatever choice they was, or they can walk to the other side, which was the same setup and talk to them as well. So that was the, that was the perks of being on the ball field. Everybody kind of wanted to be on the ball field because you can talk to everybody. So the wreck was extra dumb sweet. I was shocked from the beginning of how they brought us in and how they drug us and how that prison, I was thinking how that prison was going to be. It turned out to be kind of like relaxed a little bit. Like it was cool. Like they was bringing in dudes, you know what I mean? A lot of old dudes that that was down from, from Norfolk that been down a minute. Like it, it was dudes they were bringing in that I, I never, I, I heard of the Pepsi boys from Norfolk, but it was a few of them that I met through the times. Dudes that was the Pepsi boys, the uh, the Cutlass boys. Like, you know what I mean? I met a couple of them while I was on Sussex, man. So like they was bringing in dudes from all over the place so around this time when i'm telling y'all they actually started bringing in dudes from saint brides now saint brides was a level two prison which is located in chesapeake as y'all know now that's an open dorm prison like i'm not really i told y'all about how the receiving was when i was at deep metals with the it was all the bunk beds no privacy like i ain't really with the open dorm and it's in chesapeake and i'm still not with it but that's a level two so basically, if you up there anyway, you don't got a lot of time, five, 10 years, six years, seven years, four years, five years, you got time like that. So what they started doing was this, like around two, the end of 03 and in the, in, in the beginning of 04, they had made a new rule for them because they was down in St. Bride's getting it, getting it lit. They was getting lit on St. Bride's. They told them if you catch a dirty urine and you're on St. Bride's, they was transferring you to Sussex too. So your level goes from a two to a four if you catch a dirty urine. So what happened, the dudes that was catching dirty yawns, they were sending them to the Sussex. So the compound was just changing because it was a lot of dudes from Norfolk. Basically, at St. Brass, there's going to be a lot of dudes from Tidewater, majority a lot of dudes from Norfolk. But it's Tidewater, period. You know what I mean? Like I told y'all, it's in our backyard. It's not a far drive for your peoples to come see you. You just got to deal with that open door shit. So they had a lot of people. It was a lot of people and like it was a lot of people coming, a lot of dudes that was coming from 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 St. Bride's up up to up to Sussex. So around this time right here, as they doing the transferring, like it was just crazy because 
like to this day, I'm not even gonna lie, y'all. Like, I'm a marijuana smoker. Like, I still smoke marijuana, but I started smoking marijuana in there because it was just like one day I just woke up and it was weed every goddamn where. When I say every goddamn where, I mean everybody had it. It was weed on this. The Newport News dude had a shitload of weed. The Richmond dudes had weed. The Norfolk dudes had weed. The Country Town dudes had weed. Everybody had weed. Everybody, think, name it. Everybody was getting their hands in weed. The weed game was crazy up there. Everybody was selling it. Everybody was smoking it. It was just crazy up there how the weed game was. You know what I mean? It's like I just, it was crazy because it was at one point where like you, it was scarce. Like you had to try to find it. Uh, uh, then you find it. It's rolled up. This is back when they used to roll the jumps up for you and sell you a, 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 a J. They call it a J. They'll sell you a J for a couple packs. You got them. Like, sometimes you just be curious, like, man, let me open this shit up to see what's in here. And you fuck around and, and rip it, try to rip it open, and there's two, three papers rolled up with a little bit of weed. I'm talking about some shit you'll scrape off your leg when you're in the car. That type much weed. Like, it was no weed in them joints. It went from that to weed everywhere. Now, I'm not going to say this is all responsible. The, the, the St. Bride dudes are responsible for this because they're not. But this is around the time of the year when I told you, when I'm telling y'all, everybody had their hands in marijuana. So I ain't going to lie. Like, that kind of was like my, <clears throat> that was like my, my my escape. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that shit dealt with my anxiety of being in that motherfucking hellhole. But I ain't going to lie. Like, when I smoked weed in there, it kind of took me away. Like, I went with it. And it was like, when I don't got it, I was moody. And that's how I know that I just needed that shit. And that shit was keeping me going. You know what I mean? Like, it's sad to say, but it, it definitely kept me going in there. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I became a, like a heavy weed smoker. The way I smoked in there, I never smoked when I was, before I got locked up. So it was like, I dealt with I dealt with prison how I had to deal with prison. You know what I mean? In my mind, it was weed. Weed helped that shit. So, like, I definitely was smoking weed. So, with weed everywhere... It was, like, easy to get. Like, it was easy, like, to, to just be anywhere. Like, I'm telling you, like, they had it, man. They had it set up. Like, I'm telling you, like, it's like they knew everybody was smoking weed. So, around this time, after the St. Bride dudes came with that, my homeboy, man, I'm going to call him Dirt Diggler, man. He came up there. And when he came up there, he got it lit immediately. And this was my guy. I ain't even going to lie. Like, me, he came up there, me and him clicked immediately. He came from St. Bride's, just like with a lot of dudes. And he got it lit immediately. But it was like... With the with the with the with the weed being everywhere, like dudes was just really smoking at the time. Like it hasn't registered to at least me yet. Like, look, let's get some paper. Let's try to get some money off this. Like, let's try to move. Let's, you know what I mean? Let's try to get a package. Let's try to do something. No, like I just wanted to smoke. Like I'm smoking. You know what I mean? That used to be my plan. So, like, um, around this time, like the um the dude Dirk Diggler, I'm telling you about, like he moved in the pod. So when he moved in the pod. He ended up coming up there with a dude that was up there at St. Bride's with him. That actually he was got kicked off the joint with him. So they both came up there together. So he and my part, the other dude in the other part. So he ended up making a play with dude. And the, the whole time dude was doing that at the bride. So dude come up to the susses and, and made the same play. You know what I mean? He was going to the V room, fucking him up. So he went to the V room. He was going to get the pack. So when he get the pack, my man had the pack. So it was my man Pac. So I'm locked in because it's my man. Bro, I'm telling y'all, like, he was, he was, like, my man, he was, he, like, for real, for real, he was getting some, this back, this before the, the, the Zaza, this before Zaza days, y'all. Zaza ain't hit penitentiary till I would say, like, 2000 and Lim. My word, like, 2000 and Lim, 2010, like, that's when Zaza hit. Zaza hit, they won't know Zaza yet. No Zaza. So this is the lava, but my man used to get that good lava from Norfolk. And that lob used to be fire. I'm talking about every time he strike, it used to be fire. So all we doing is just blowing, 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 blowing. It's weed everywhere. You don't, I, if he don't got it, we, we buy it from somewhere else. It was marijuana everywhere, literally, y'all. I don't know what happened or how it happened or what was going on. All I know, I looked up and it was just different dudes all around the place that had a bunch of goddamn marijuana. So they had on the commissary. You can go on commissary, like, you know, you can buy tobacco products around this time. They stopped selling tobacco in prison probably like 2010. 2010, I think that shit was done. But when I first got on Sussex, you still can buy Black and Miles, Newports, all that shit. But guess what they had on commissary, y'all? Y'all ain't gonna believe this. And ask anybody that was up there around this time. This is a fact. They had Philly Blunts on the damn commissary. <laughs> That's words. So all we used to do 
all day. I'm talking about the dude to bring the pat back. You know what I mean? My man to get the pat. We blowing. We blowing it. I'm telling you, we smoking, 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 smoking. That's all we used to do is smoke. I told you it was three rest schedules. We used to go outside, probably that, on that next rest schedule, whatever it was, morning, evening, night, it didn't even matter. We going outside, the, 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 uh, the rock would do it in his part, which we would probably be on the basketball, all us on the basketball courts, and they like on the other fence. Like we right in the fence. They on this side of the court. We on this side of the court, locked over a fence, a fence in between us. So we'll just be out there. His people will be out there. Me and my man will be out there. We'll just be out there just blowing it down, just blowing. Now, if you didn't have a Philly blunt, this would what dudes used to do. Dudes used to actually crack a, um, take the plastic piece off the black and mild, crack it down the middle like, like a Philly. You know what I mean? Take the tobacco out. Keep that brown paper in the middle, though. Roll the weed into the into the black and mild. That's what that's what we used to smoke. Those dudes used to smoke those. That was the normal J. That was the normal blunt. But if you wanted to show off, it was your birthday, <clears throat> or you might got the pack, so you really showing your ass. So you like fuck it. I'm gonna roll a whole blunt. So dudes was rolling whole blunts. When we go outside, my word, we were smoking whole blunts. I'm talking about police, right? Police walking around. They smell it. The whole yard. Like I told you, it's kind of different when it's tobacco actually being sold and dudes are smoking weed and dudes are smoking cigarettes and dudes are smoking blacks and dudes are smoking roll-ups. Roll-ups is the cigarettes without a filter that you can buy. That's just the tobacco and just roll it in the paper like a J and smoke it. Dude, that's a cheaper way to smoke tobacco. And a lot of dudes smoke that. A lot of dudes will smoke that shit on hard times, goddammit. I did before. I ain't gonna lie. But, goddamn... That's how we was smoking. We was smoking. We was blowing it down. I promise y'all. Like it was we was just every every time we go outside, morning, nighttime, evening time, smoking. Hey, we go outside, come in the park, right before lockdown, we go smoke. Got down. When you go in the cell, you gonna smoke. Got down. When you wake up after breakfast, you gonna smoke. I'm telling you, we was just blowing it. I'm telling you, like this was crazy, y'all. I couldn't believe this was going on in the penitentiary, but all I know was it was helping my time go. Like it was like a good thing. It was, it was feeling good to go smoke and just ah, I'm going to sell, chill out, got the TV now. You know what I mean? I'm relaxing. Like it was marijuana everywhere, marijuana everywhere, y'all. I'm talking about. It was a great day when they. It was a great time when they started bringing them dudes from St. Brian's up there. Like that joint was crazy, man. My man got it lit immediately. You know what I mean? But. As all this stuff is going on, what I'm seeing him do, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm seeing other people, like, like, like I said, like I told y'all, like, I'm just minding my business, just, you know what I mean? Just being a cool dude, like, I know how to mingle. So I got along with everybody, like, a lot of city, different dudes from Richmond that used to rock with me. A lot of dudes from Newport News used to rock with me. A lot of dudes ain't gonna tell you nothing wrong about me. Like, I was diplomatic. I used to just try to just keep everything peaceful, you know what I mean? And rock with everybody. So that's what I was trying to do. So... Me and my man, all we used to do was blow. Long story short. <laughs> Long story short. I'll, I'll do it all that for everything could be co-aesthetic and everything just be a smooth environment. But you know, it's prison shit going to happen. But at the end of the day, I want everything to be co-aesthetic, man. So we in there just enjoying ourselves, just blowing it down, chilling, relaxing. You know what I mean? So boom. Now, around this time, they really didn't do, they didn't really do goddamn, um, like like pissing niggas and shit. Like I heard about it a couple times, but when we first got up there, like niggas won't even smoking like that, so it didn't even matter. But like as them little year and it little, little year went by from oh three to oh four, like it's kinda like it's a big thing now. Like the whole pod be smoked out, every pod, four pods in the building, every pod smoked out, everything, everybody smoking marijuana. Now, I'm pretty sure they had all the other drugs up there as well. You know what I mean? Cause around this time, you know what I mean, the uh the heroin, the, the heroin, the dope used to be like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, for real, for real, growing up, I never was around heroin. So, like, I ain't really see heroin until I came to prison. Like, the heroin, you had heroin addicts. Like, it was just it, f weed everywhere, definitely. But drugs was everywhere. Because this dude's up there, especially a lot of the white guys. Like, they, they do the hard drugs. Black dudes do too, you know what I mean? But usually in prison, like, in Virginia prison, I know how it is. You usually be the white dudes that spend the good money on the hard drugs. You know what I mean? It ain't nothing racist about that. It's just what it is. A lot of those white dudes who get locked up in Virginia, they not from the hood, so they come from fortunate families. So when they come in there, they straight. They got good backup on the street. They can call, and they already got habits, so they can call whoever they want, and they spend money. Like, that's a whole nother story. I ain't even get to that yet, but back to the weed. Like, I'm smoking weed. I never tried no other drug. I never tried. E-Pill, I never tried. None of that. I miss E-Pill era. 
I didn't even get a chance to get an e pill. I got locked up in 2000. I think they got lit probably like two, 2001, 2002, 2003, and, and on up. But I never got a chance to do that. Dudes used to get them in penitentiary too, dude. The pills used to come through. But I never used to try that. I just want marijuana. I just used to try to make sure it was good marijuana. That's all I wanted. You know what I mean? So me and my man, the routine used to be every every day. I'm talking about he get the pack. Bro ain't even really selling shit. Like he just... <laughs> We smoking. He just he was straight already. He didn't really didn't need no money. He didn't need no bread. I ain't gonna lie. My man Dirk Diggler didn't need no bread. So all we used to do is just he used to look out for his few his few people that he fought with. He had an uncle. You know what I mean? He used to rock with him dumb hard. He used to look out for him. You know what I mean? And got down rest of that. Got down. He used to keep for himself, and we just used to smoke. You know what I mean? Like I said, I was a lot because I I was bro man. I used to rock with bro. So, um, one day, man. Shit got crazy. Shit got crazy one day. Like, boom, we go to breakfast, come back. We come back from breakfast. You know what I mean? They like, boom, morning wreck on standby. So, yeah, down right, we going outside to smoke. Y'all already know what time it is. Y'all know the routine. We about to go out there, blow it down with the dude from that he rocking with in the other part. You know the count. That's what we about to do. So, they put us on standby for outside wreck. So, when they put us on standby... You know what I mean? We waiting to go outside and shit like that. Oh, like, yeah, ready to go outside and shit. We got the basketball court. So like that. So usually a lot of dudes will buck on that basketball court unless it's a time like you got a session. Like, yo, we about to meet niggas and go. Then niggas will go outside. Other than that, if you ain't a baller, you know what I mean? Niggas ain't going on that basketball court. Like, you know what I mean? Niggas ain't trying to get locked in that junk. That's a dead yard. But morning time when there's a place set up, you going out there to smoke. Niggas is going out there. So boom, we going out there. We get out there. You know what I mean? So we on the court. So, like I told y'all, they never really was pissing niggas like that, like, in the beginning. You know what I mean? It wasn't a lot of dudes going down for dirty ones or none of that shit. So, we on the court chilling. You know what I mean? We just got out there. Dude locked us in the joint, and he peeled the CO dude. As soon as the CO dude peeled off, I'm standing on the fence. You know what I mean? I look up. We ain't even roll up yet. I look up. I see my roommate. It was a dude, I forgot his name. He was a dude from Richmond, though. Young boy from Richmond. He was cool. But I see him coming down the jump. He ain't got no, he ain't dressed like, you know, when you're on the boulevard, you're supposed to have your shirt on, your, I mean, your scrubs on, tucked in. You know what I mean? You're supposed to be dressed for the boulevard. Like, you can have on a t-shirt, wife beater, all that other shit when you're on the yard. But he was outside the gate, so I'm trying, I'm like, damn, he ain't on the yard. I'm like, what's up, bro? What you doing? So he like, yo, they just call you in that damn dirt for, 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 <laughs> For a piss test. I'm like, what? He was like, yeah, because I was in cell 20. I was in cell 23. I moved from 34 now, y'all. Now I'm in that on the same tier from 23 to 34. Now I'm in 23. So, boom. He like, yo, they called you and Dirt for a um, piss test. He was like, they called cell 23 and they called cell 25. And Dirt was in 25. So I'm like, damn, for real? He like, yeah. So Dirt like, damn, shit crazy. So let me rewind the tape, y'all. Y'all know how I rewind the tape. Let me rewind the tape. My man, when he used to get the pack, he ended up getting some Nazium pills. You know what I mean? So I won't hip to the Nazium pills yet. Y'all know I get locked up young. Um, you know what I mean? So a lot of shit I wasn't hip to yet. But the Nazium pills, y'all probably heard of that. Those are the pills that you take. And they're supposed to clean you out. But they have you itching and scratching and your skin be feeling, ah, that shit was just crazy. But he ended up getting those. He got me a, he got me a, um, two pills. He had had two pills and the dude that be bringing it, y'all had two pills. So it was like, we didn't give a fuck about a piss test, to be honest with you. Even though they wasn't messing with us, we didn't care. We wasn't thinking about no piss test. We were just smoking every day, every day, all day. So my roommate tell us. That they call us for a dirty urine. So we like, what? He like, yeah, they call y'all, bro. They call both of y'all. So I'm like, damn. So we trying to wonder why the CO didn't come get us off the yard. Because I didn't seen them come get dudes off the yard. Like, if it's something for medical or especially a dirty urine, they come get you off the yard. So, boom, they didn't come get us. So we like, damn, man. We like, man, fuck it. Soon, but as soon as they told us, as soon as my, uh, my roommate told us that, I just... I used to keep the pills in a little glove, like a little finger, and I had it tied. A little finger of a glove I cut, then I just had it tied up, and that shit would just be on me. You know what I mean? So when they, when he told me they called us, all I did was this. I popped them jumps. That's word. On every yard, they got a water cooler. So just imagine a big ass, not a big, y'all know like a regular water cooler, like a, a round, like grenade-looking type of joint. Like it was a water cooler. They, they on every yard. So... 
on every basketball court they got it and they got it like on a fence but it's like on the fence sitting up kind of like oh i forgot how it used to be but it used to be like that so if you balling or you working out anything like that you want some water you can just walk up to the jump hit the button and ah it's some savage shit but you ah water falling from high pause that drink got now hitting you you know what i mean but that's how you drink the water but man this word when he told us they did that boom we popped the pills Man, this is my word. We still got nervous. We was like, man, fuck that. Because you know, if you catch a dirty young one on Sussex, like, you was going to the hole. Like, this wasn't just a charge. No, this is, boom, they're going to separate us. Oh, you're big. You got to start over somewhere else. Like, it's about to be over. So the last thing you want is a dirty young one. You know what I mean? That's the, that's how they inconvenient you when you catch that. You catch the dirty young one, you go to the hole, and you, 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 you're not coming. You might, you the chances of you coming back to where you was at is slim. You know what I mean? So it's it's a total goddamn like just something that you don't want. You don't like nobody wants that shit. I'm telling you, like I done seen it. Like the, the it can be the meanest dude, it can be the craziest dude. Let them get called for a piss test, and you gonna see <laughs> you gonna you gonna see panic. I'm telling you, you gonna see panic. So that's what happened with me and my man. Even though we had nasty pills, we didn't care about catching dirty ones. When they called us for that goddamn dirty one, we panic. You hear me? With a capital P, we panicked. So the water that they got up there, it's morning time. There's a few dudes out there on our jump. But me and bro bodied that water. I ain't even going to lie. We bodied, bodied that water. I, we didn't drink all of it. We damn near drunk all of it. And that's, that shit is a lot of water because it have ice in it. And it's filled with water. So it's cold. You know what I mean? We drunk that water, man. This is my word. They let us stay out there the whole wreck time. I know for a fact I pissed. I, 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 I pissed probably like. Two, three times out there. We was out there an hour. I probably pissed an hour and some change probably. I probably pissed two, three times because drinking all that water, that shit had you running. That nauseam pill got my arms itching. I'm scratching my leg like I'm on the dope. I'm like, God damn, what the fuck? This the shit you got to go through for smoking weed? Shit crazy. So, boom. We body the water out there. Pissed a million times. Like, like we just like, fuck it. Like, we got, we had, they gave us time. So, y'all know. They, they say the water game beats the dirty urine. Now, that's a major thing in prison, the water game, when it comes to the, to the piss test. Because if you they say if you drink enough water, I'm going to say they say, because this shit don't always be true. But they say if you drink enough water, that this shit will fuck up your dirt, your piss test. You know what I mean? Like if you piss straight water. So dudes will drink water. Rah, dudes, dudes will torture their damn self just for they can goddamn motherfucking piss water when they go for the dirty urine. So it's supposed to work. I didn't seen it work. Through the years, I done seen it work, y'all. Like, I done seen dudes, goddamn, get called for a dirty urine. I know he smoked weed. He'll drink that water, drink the hell out of that water, uh, even if he ain't got a lot of time. And pass it. You know what I mean? It be different things. It be different ways, all type of shit. Like, so we drinking the water. We punished the water. We pissed a million times. Now, wreck is over with. Wreck is over with, y'all. So they told us. To go back to the building. So, like, I, they didn't say nothing to us. We get back to the building. I was like, yo, I'm going to ask the lady in the booth, man. Fuck this, man. You know what I mean? What's going on? So, I asked her. I said, uh, y'all call me for a dirty urine. I was like, when I'm going to take the, you know, because after wreck, it's lockdown time. It's count time. You know what I mean? Once count time, there's nothing going on at count time. So, I asked her what was going on. She was like, all right. They said, she was she checked. She was like, yeah, they said they're going to um, piss y'all after uh, count. You know what I mean? So, boom. That's more time, y'all. I got more time. Y'all know I went in the room and snapped the hell out. I went in the room. This is my word, y'all. I drunk. So another thing. They said if you drink warm water, if you drink warm water, that shit's supposed to make you piss faster. Like, it, it'll come out you faster. And it, I, 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 I really believe that. That shit worked. If you drink warm water, that shit make you piss fast as hell. So I went in the cell, and I just was drinking the hell out that warm water. I ain't even going to lie. I was drinking the fuck out that warm water. I punished it. I probably drunk 20 cups. 10, 20 cups. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I drunk so many goddamn cups, and I know my homeboy Dirk Diggler in the other cell doing the same goddamn thing. I know he doing the same goddamn thing because ain't there one of us trying to catch this dirty and go to the hole. That's the last thing we trying to do. You know what I mean? So I, I ain't, psh, man, I drunk so much water, y'all. Goddamn, I was, I, man, I had to put the cut up. I had to use the bathroom. We, this, this count time. Goddamn, I, I was, I was, excuse my, I was doodling water. 
I was I was doodling water. That shit was, it might have been diarrhea. That shit was coming out like water. I promise you, it was coming out like water. I threw up. I threw up that I drunk so much water. When they counted after they walked by, it was, it was like I drunk too much. That joint was all, you know, I don't know if y'all ever threw up water before, but it's that junk feel worse than throwing up the other shit. Like, the water junk just feel like your soul ain't, like, it's just so much coming up. I never want to do it again. But I threw up. I, I, I didn't, I shit it, water. God damn, it was just so much. That that water game just kill you, man. So I was just at the point like, man, I can't drink no more. I can't do nothing. I can't drink no more. I won't drink no more. Fuck that shit. I'm ready to go take this shit now. I done pissed like five, six, seven, eight more times in the cell since the outside pissing. So I'm like, I got to be good. But we smoking every day, y'all. And we smoking blunts. We smoking them blacks. That's baby blunts. We we blowing it down. So, like like I say, that shit be different for some people, man. You know what I mean? I was smoking big marijuana. So, I don't know if that was the case, but boom. I, they, they clear count. My part is on standby for child. They going first. So, again, I'm ready to get this shit out the way. I done took the nasium pill. I done pissed. I done did this. I, I'm... It's over, man. Like, I'm just to the point now. That water got me feeling so bloated and mad that I'm just ready to get this shit over with. Like, what the hell is going on? She like, look, after lunch, they're going to they gonna, they gonna give y'all the, um, the, um, the piss test. I'm like, all right, man, more time. I ain't going to lunch. I can't eat shit. I'm fucked up. I'm hurt. My stomach bubbling. I drunk too much damn water. Y'all don't understand, man. Like, if y'all can drink water like this, man, go through this. Dudes go through this a lot in prison, though. Like, this is like normal situations. Like, you just got to deal with after how it be after you beat the piss test. So, they called us after after uh, after lunch was over. They man, they gave us so much. I never seen nobody get this much time after they get called for a piss test. Usually, if they call you for a piss test, they want you right now. Come do this right now. I don't care you if you got to get counted over there with where they at. They want it right now. They gave us all the time in the damn world, all the time in the world. They gave us all the time in the world, y'all. They finally called us. Me and bro went down there. I gave their ass a straight water shot. That's what we call it, a water shot, goddammit. That's when you put straight water in the cup, in their face. <laughs> That's word I peed. That shit was, that shit like you could drink it. <laughs> That's, word. That's word, dude. Look at the joint and just start laughing. I'm like, yeah, that was water, bro. You got all water. Ain't no yellow. Ain't no, that joint was water. That joint was a straight water pee. Promise you. So, Boom. We don't know how long it take to find out. Like we think in the next day you find out if they, if you pass or not. If they, the way you find out if you pass if they don't come call your ass to pack up to go to the damn hole. That's how you know you pass. So this happened on a um I want to say a Monday or a Tuesday. So the next day they didn't call us. You know what I mean? They didn't call us. We didn't hear nobody. They want no fuss. It want nothing. They ain't mess with us. So we we back in regular mode. You know what I mean? We back in regular mode. We like, man, shit sweet, man. Shit sweet as a bitch. We ain't get pissed. Man, the next day after lunch, we chilling, doing normal rec in the rec on in the set. I mean the pod. Just, just chilling, you know what I mean? Next thing you know, we see the property officer coming in the pod. Now when the property officer coming in the pod, it's only for a few, I think three things. She she either bringing you your property, she either uh packing somebody up, they got down. You know what I mean? No, nah, she either bringing you your property, yeah, or she either packing you up if you're getting transferred somewhere, or she packing your ass up to go to the hole. So it can be those three things. So when you see her, you kind of, so we seen her, we still didn't know what was going on, but we see her come in with boxes. You know what I mean? She came in with boxes. Like, they weren't boxed up already. It was still like the flat, like, you know, when they brand new, the flat boxes, but she got them on her cot. She come in the pod, and was like, damn, so... Me and bro nervous as a bitch. We like, oh shit, what the hell is this? Next thing you know, in a comp, White and such, white and such and such come to the booth. I'm like, oh, god damn, man, shit, niggas looking at us like, oh wow, like no, I'm like, man, go to the booth. They like, lady, hand you two trash bags. It's my first time going to the hole, man. I'm like, mm. like it was crazy, man. I can't believe this, man. Like, damn, they give me the two trash bags. They get bro the two trash bags, man. They pack our dumb ass up, man, and send our ass to the hole that evening, man. I was sick, man. I was mad, y'all. Like, 
I won't try to go through the hole, man. I won't never try to experience that. But that's part of prison sometimes. You got to go through that. That's just what it is. Usually when they bag me, they go to the hole. Majority of the times, y'all, it was for them dirty yawns. I ain't going to lie to y'all. Like, every damn time. Like, you know what I mean? For dirty yawn. So, that was my first one. They get us, bro. They get us, man. So, we 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 go to the bank. They put it, they put me, we in three building now. They put me upstairs like in 37. They put him like in 28. So I can see him. Like he across from me. So I can we can talk through the door. You know what I mean? I can see him and shit. You know what I mean? So they got some weird shit going on back there. Like how they do you on the time though. Like they do um some shit called 90 day review, but it like it depends who do your joint. They got a chart on your door that's, that's like the that, that let them know. Your charge, how long you been in there, if you you, you made your, your, cause this is what they want you to do, even though they in the hole, they want you to make your bed up at eight o'clock and you can't get under the covers no more till after six o'clock. That was the petty shit. They, you in the hole, you not going nowhere, you locked down. They wanted you to make your bed up and be on top of your bed, even if it's wintertime. They want you to be on top of the blanket until six o'clock in the evening. And when they see you doing that, if they see you under your cover, They'll write you up. If they see something in your window, they'll write you up. If they see your bed not made, they'll write you up. And all that goes under that 90-day review job. So this is how they was doing it back then. So this is in October, I think, when me and bro fell. Almost go. It was like the end of September or something like that when me and bro went to the hole. So, boom. Like, we just waiting to do that. Like, the, we get the charge. The charge say 30 days. You know what I mean? For the dirty you and You lose your contact visits for six months. You know what I mean? That's another punishment. No more visits for six months. You know what I mean? So, boom. I'm like, damn. I'm just dealing with that shit, man. That whole shit different. Like, you back there. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got no TV. You ain't got shit but a damn bed. So, I just really caught up reading books, man. Like, I was on my reading shit back there. You know what I mean? Just trying to just stay stay sane back that motherfucker. Because that's where all the crazy motherfuckers be at as well. So, you, it's all that night. That shit is a madhouse, man. That's a whole nother story. At night, the whole is a goddamn madhouse. But that's another story. But we just back there trying to figure out how they going to do us on this 90-day review for we can get the hell out. So, one day, it's the cool dude. They got two sergeant dudes that work back there in that building as far as handle the people in the hole. One dude is a Jamaican... Um, he was a Jamaican dude. Can't think of his name. But he was one of the sergeants that was working there. He was tall, kind of Jamaican dude. Um, everybody was cool with him. Like, you could tell he was the cool sergeant. You could tell how the workers that work in that building used to come with him and just had the freedom to do shit. He was a cool dude. Then he had this another asshole. His name was Hamlin. That was his name. I remember his name because he was a freaking asshole. His name was Hamlin. When I say asshole, y'all, like, just imagine a black sergeant slaughter. That's how he used to act with the hat, the, the, the state trooper hat. That's what they wearing there, the sergeants and shit. They wear those hats. He got the state trooper hat. He just was on you about everything. His voice, yeah, he talked stupid as hell. I hated that dude. I swear to God, I hated him. But he didn't work into like kind of like shift change. So in the morning time, they got the dude, this the cool sergeant dude. He walking through doing the, the um. The the the, uh, the charts of the uh, ninety day review. So boom, it's a good thing. But they on the bottom tier. But it takes a minute to get all the way up. That he doing every cell. So it takes a minute because when he get to your cell, he go through your joint, and you can actually talk to him and cop your plea. You know what I mean? On some like man, please get me, man, get me off this joint. Just let me do my thirty days and dip. You know what I mean? Like you can cop your plea to him. So dudes is talking to him. It take probably twenty minutes of cell. So. I'm waiting. We on the top tier. Me and bro waiting on the top tier. So it's the cool dude. So we straight. He letting everybody he doing. We hearing them let him off. He letting them off on the, on, the, on the, whatever time they got for the charge. That's what they got to do. So everybody is happy rocking with him. So as I'm waiting, I get a jump. The intercom go off and say, White, you got a visit. So I'm like, I got a visit. My mama come see me, y'all. But you know, now I'm in the hole. I ain't got contact visits. So I didn't want my mama to come see me. Behind the glass, you know what I mean? Because that's how I was in the jail. Like, that joint, I wasn't really with that, man. But I know my mama loved me. I know she wanted to see her son, but she popped up on me. But this was the day I wish she didn't pop up. It was crazy. So she popped up on me. So, yeah, damn, I'm like, damn, I got a visit. She's like, yeah. So this is like around 12 something. So I'm like, oh, all right. So I'm like, damn. So I'm still a little skeptical. Like, I ain't really trying to miss dude. You know what I mean? So when you go to the hole, I mean, when you, when you go... Out the building, when you in the hole, man, they, they transfer you like Hannibal Lecter on some crazy shit. I swear to God, they put you in a wheelchair, they shackle you down to the wheelchair, legs and feet, and then they push you. So when people be on the yard and you be seeing dudes come out, or coming to going to medical or going to a visit or whatever, they in a the wheelchair, that shit look like some crazy shit, man. Like, 
And I, I never wanted to do it because I won't get no visit. But Mom Dukes popped up and see me. So I had to get a visit. They wheeled me out there on the wheelchair in front of the whole compound. They was like, oh, shit, they go wheezy right now. They go see what that damn boy. You get to see people. You just you can't really do shit because they just pushing you fast as hell. They, they close the boulevard down. Nobody, no inmates on the boulevard. So and they, they, they wheel you to your destination. So, boom, they take me to my destination. I go see Mom Dukes. I was happy to see my mama. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, it was a great visit. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you need, you know what I mean, to hear inspirational things from like your mama, man. You know, your mama keep you up. So Ron Dukes came and checked me up, man. Check me out, y'all. And it was a good visit. But why when I got back, you know what I mean? I don't see no sergeant dude no more. There's no sergeant dude. I'm like, where the hell is he at? Where the hell is he at? I don't see the sergeant dude. You know what I mean? I walk, they, they, they get me out the wheelchair, walk me upstairs in my cell. When, when the police leave, I see my man Dirk Diggler. He come to his door. He show me the paper. He was like, I'm gone, bitch. Bitch, I'm gone. Bitch, I'll be out of here. God damn it. Nigga say after these 30 days, I'm gone. We already did three weeks. I'm out of here. I'm like, damn. I'm like, damn, you out of here, bro. He like, yeah, I'm out of here. I'm like, damn, I'm happy for bro. You know what I mean? But I'm like, yo, what do that? He like, yo, you dead. He was like, <laughs> he was like, you dead. He was like, dude, doing that shit now. He was like, man, he next door. He about to come over here. And he coming from the top tail. He was like, he going to start up there where you at. I was like, what? I'm like, man, go ahead. He was like, yeah. I'm like, damn, I'm happy my man getting out, man. But I was sick that I'm staying in there still because I ain't get my, my ain't review, my own 90-day review yet. So he finally came. So when he came, he came to my door. Man, I'll never forget it. They come with the counselor. They walked to my door, man. I got everything straight, man. He looked at my charge. He looked at me. And he looked at my charge. He said, I'm now pacing you on a 90-day review. I'll be checking back with, with you next couple weeks. And he signed the joint and dipped. I was like, oh, my God. Man, I couldn't believe it, man. I couldn't believe it. But my mama came and seen me, and it was my mama. I couldn't turn down the visit. Definitely never do that. But it was just like bad timing, and I ended up getting a dickhead, and he's Oh, he gave it to me. He, he, man, that man was petty. That man gave me that 90 day review on my first time in the bing for a dirty yawn. Bad me ain't up. Never had no complaints from police or none of that. And he did that shit. I couldn't believe it, man. Man, them people drug me back there, man. I told you I went back there in September. Nah, I'm tripping. It wasn't September when I went back there. We wanted to take y'all. I went back there. And this was June. This was summertime. I'm tripping. This was summertime. I went back there in June. I didn't get out until my birthday, damn near. My birthday is in October 7th. When I came out that joint, finally, niggas was like, damn, T.Y., you got little as a bitch. You small as, I'm talking about lost weight back there. You definitely losing weight. You losing weight in the hole. That's another thing. They drug me back there, man. I ain't even gonna lie. They drug the shit out of me back there. Like, that shit was crazy, man. I did, like, damn near three and a half months back there. You know what I mean? Under that 90-day review with that dickhead, man. Me and him get to arguing one time. He dragged me for some more. You know what I mean? Because he was dragging me. I didn't understand. So I just did my time, y'all. You know what I mean? I ain't really complain about that shit too much, man. I just laid my ass down, man. It was finally over. But when I was getting out, it was like almost my birthday time. And then the good thing about me getting out, they called the intercom. I was like, White, you pack up. You leaving today. And you going back to 2C. I'm like, damn, 2C? Oh, okay, okay. I was cool with that. But what made it crazy was that my man Dirt Diggler, he had, when he got out, he went to full building. So now I'm trying to get in full building, y'all. Y'all know the count. Weed everywhere. I'm trying to stay where he at. And that's how we did it, man. So this word, man, like this this shit is nuts. Like it was a beautiful thing. And then it became a bad thing. Like it was good blowing. And it was good blowing. And it was good smoking. And every day you want to, the next thing you know, your ass is going to the hole for a dirty yawn. That was the crazy shit, man. So there's consequences to that shit. There's consequences in penitentiary just like it is on the street about everything, man. Like, same shit, man. Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't staying my way. My, I wasn't staying my ass out the way, y'all. I couldn't when it came to the weed. Like, that was my only weakness. That was my kryptonite. I had to have that. So it was like, you know what I mean? I used to be like, damn that dirty yawn, man. You know what I mean? But... I swear to y'all, man, like, weed everywhere on that compound. You didn't have no problem with it, man. You didn't have no problem with it, y'all. That shit was just marijuana for days, man. You know what I mean? So what I'm going to need y'all to do for this content, man, like, share, and subscribe, man. Let's keep it going, man. Let's keep it going, man. Bud was everywhere. Like I told y'all, share the video. Share the jump, man. Keep me rolling, y'all.
Like, share, and subscribe. I told y'all we on the road to 100 subscribers. I'm just trying to get 100 subscribers. I'm going to do 100 at a time. And I'm going to be patient. And I'm going to push for 100 at a time. That's the goal, y'all. You know what I mean? But I got a bunch. They're going to keep coming. They're just going to keep coming and keep coming until y'all get tired of this shit. I'm just going to keep rocking So y'all get sick of it, man. So like, share, and subscribe to Kid, man. Keep me rolling, man. Keep me lit, man. Let's keep this content rolling. And we're going to make it happen, y'all. We're going to keep telling these stories, man. And what we're going to do at the end of the day, we're going to stay our ass out the way. So I'm telling y'all, stay our ass out the way. That was the more of the goddamn story. If I was staying my ass out the way and wasn't a fiend trying to get to that weed and trying to do that in there, my ass would have never went to the went to the hole. I would have never had to see my mom behind the glass in prison. So that was my fault for not staying out the way. So stay y'all ass out the way out here, man. Make the right damn call. Make the right decision, man. Let's keep it rolling, man. Let's get it.